Welcome to for loops lecture. So for loops iterate over elements from a sequence, which include list, tuple, or dictionary, and outputs all the elements from the sequence. So let's just start off with a very basic for loop of for i in range four colon print i. As you can see here, we have zero to three. We change that to say ten. Go zero to nine. We could do, let's say, the even numbers from 0 to 10. And it doesn't have to strictly be i, but it typically is an i. So we change to say cake. That's not very intuitive. And we have the exact same output. OK, so moving on from that, let's say we do for i well, the greeting in range for colon print hello world and as you can see here with the output of the string hello world four times two times or ten times which is probably a little bit too many okay so moving on from that I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and let's say we make a list of cats so tiger naturally lion Jaguar and let's say leopard. And then we do for cats in cats colon print cats. And as you can see here, we have the output of tiger, lion, jaguar, and leopard. Okay. So moving on from that, let's say we do for num in range four colon print num. And then we do num plus say 30. And as you can see here we have the typical 0 to 3 for the range of 4 but we also have the addition of 30 each time. And I'm going to even go and do let's say num times num. Great. Okay. Moving on from that and we'll try a nested list. So nest 1 and we'll have three nested lists. So the first one's going to be 10, 20, and 30. And the next one's going to be 3.5, 4.5, and 5.5. And then we'll do, oops, our last one is going to be sword, hammer, and shield. And then what we can do is for i in range three colon, print nest one i. And this prints out all the nested lists. Okay, well, we'll go a bit further than this using the nest one. So let's say we do for i in range three colon again, res equals nest one zero i plus nest one one i so we're adding all of the elements from these two nested lists so 10 plus 3.5 20 plus 4.5 30 plus 5.5 and then we do print nest one two so we're grabbing all of the strings so sword hammer and shield and then we'll do i dot capitalize. I don't forget to put the parentheses here, otherwise this function won't work for this list. Do plus, then we'll do power level equal res. We run this, and as you can see here, we have the sword, hammer, and shield with their own power levels, which we've calculated. And notice that I've used the capitalize, which has caused the S, H, and S to be capital letters as opposed to what it was before originally. Okay. And let's say we also do weapons equals empty list. And then what we can do is.
let's say we just simply delete all of this. We'll rewrite this part. Okay, so what I'm going to do is S, keep that in the proper indented block. So S equals nest1 to I dot capitalize like before, capitalize plus power level again equals plus string nest one zero i plus nest one one i and that should work yep that should be fine okay and then what we do is because we have weapons as empty, what we want to do is weapons dot appends s, and then we do weapons. And as you can see here now, we have the strings for all of these sword, hammer, and shield, all these weapons with their own power levels as strings in a list, and we can access them. So we do zero we get sword, one is hammer, and two is shield. Before, with just the prints, which we did in the previous example, we couldn't actually grab the values, we could only print them out. Okay, so moving on from that, what we can do now is, let's say, an additions table or multiplications table. So for i in range 1 to 8, colon, print, we'll do formatting plus equals dot format i i i plus i and as you can see here we have one plus one is two all the way to seven plus seven is fourteen and we can change this to a multiplication but we have to do the arithmetic here this is just where it's represented so we do that as you can see we have one times one is one all the way to seven times seven is forty nine okay there's another way of doing this as well. So let's say we do for k in the same range of one to eight, colon, print, and then we do the percent sign d times percent sign d equals percent sign d, and then we'll do the percent sign, so it's the modulus rather, and then what we can do is k, k, and then k times k, and this should hopefully work. Great, so it's exactly the same output as what we have above, and we can change these to say f, and then we'll get floats instead, as you can see here. We do the same with this. It's rather long, and we could do the same here with this as well. Okay, so moving on from that, let's say we do a tuple. So we'll do tuple one equals ten twenty, and then a and b. And lastly, we'll just do 200 and 400. We'll do for t in tube 1, print t. As you can see, it's similar to what we had before with the nest 1, which we had output the nested lists. But what we can do is, let's say we do x and y. We'll do x and y. We run this, we're going to get the output of the individual elements. And this is what's called tuple unpacking. So tuple unpacking. And if we put in, let's say, another third elements in each of the nested tuples, and we run this, we get a value error. It says too many values to unpack, it's expected two. So we've written, that, or typed rather, that we're going to have two, but there's three elements within each of these nested tuples. So what we need to do is put z there, 
and Z here as well. And now you have the output of all of the elements from each of the nested tuples. Okay, so moving on from that, what we can also do is if I were to do for I in range two colon, and then I highlight all of this and then hit the tab to shuffle it aside to the, the right hand side and then run this, what you can see is it's given the output two times. That's because of the range. So we have range, we do range one. It's the same as what we had before with just one for loop. So this is what's called a nested for loop. And if we change this to three, we have the output of, let's say, ABC three times, as you can see here. Okay, so moving on from that, what we'll do now is dictionaries. And we do D1 equals curly brackets, key one, colon. And then we can do, let's say, before we do that, we can create cakes equals a list. And we'll do chocolates, so different types of cakes, lemon, carrot, which is my personal favorite, and vanilla. And then what we can do is the dictionary. So we'll do D1 equals K1 colon cakes. And then we can do K2 colon. And we'll do 10, 20, 30, 40. And actually what we're going to do is convert this into a tuple. So you can use either tuples or lists within a dictionary. And we do D1. And as you can see here, we have K1 with the nested tuple, or the tuple rather, and then we have the list within the dictionary. And we do K1, we get the cakes, and if we do K2, we get the numbers, the integers. Okay. So how will we do a full loop using a dictionary? Well, what we can do is for D in D1, K1, colon, print D. And as you can see here, we have the output of the cakes and we do say K2, we get the numbers. Okay, well, let's just try a few more examples. So if we do for x in d1 colon, and for i in range four, because there's four elements within each of the within the tuple and within the list. So we do print x d1 x i. And as you can see here, we have the output of all of the elements from both the tuple and the list. And lastly, oops, we just scroll down. We'll do cats again, and then we can do endangered equals serious critical. Very critical, and stable. Okay. And then what we can do is for C in range four colon print cats C dot capitalize like before. And then we'll do level endangered see square brackets dot upper okay so as you can see here we have a full loop that's printing out tiger lion jaguar and leopard and for each of them because I've used this slash n it's indentates the output of the print statements. So you have level, called serious, 
level equals critical, level is very critical, and level is stable. Which kind of makes sense for leopards considering how mysterious and how uh, stealthy they are compared to the other animals here. Okay, great. So that concludes my lecture on full loops with lists, tuples, and dictionaries. I hope that's been insightful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. Thanks. Welcome to while loops lecture. So similar to a for loop, while loops output each element, but based on a while statement being true. Once the while statement is no longer true, the while loop ends. Okay, so we'll start off with a very basic while loop of x equals zero as our initial value. Then while x is less than 10, colon, print x, then x plus equals one. And this line here, the fourth line, helps us increment from zero to nine, and that's why we have the final output as nine. We wanted it to be 10 as the final output, we simply put the less than equal sign. And as you can see, 10 is now the final output. Okay, we could also do this another way. Instead of it being plus equals, we could do equal x plus one, and we have the exact same output. And let's say, for instance, we change this to, instead of x being equal to zero, we could do five as the initial value. Instead of starting at zero, we'll start now at five. So it'll be six to, it'll be five to 10. Okay. And let's say we do 10 here, and we do, let's say 100, and we increment by 10. And now you have 10 to 100. Now, just bear in mind, we don't normally have the while loops with this kind of notation. It's normally like how we had before with the plus equals. Great, okay, so with this exact same output, we could do let's say 50, we have 50 or 100. Okay, so let's say for instance, I don't have this line of code here. So either I comment it out or I delete it. Now I'm suggesting you do not run this code. And the reason being is because what will happen is you'll have an infinite loop. Do not run code. And the reason for that is because we're not incrementing and therefore X will always be equal to the initial value of 50. So if I run this, we're just gonna get a very long list of the number 50 being printed out time and again. And it's actually gonna go on indefinitely until we stop the code from running. So as you can see here, the asterisk indicates that the cell's running and we have 50 printed out essentially infinitely. So the way to stop that is by hitting the keyboard interrupt button here. You might have to hit it a few times. And as you can see, it's stopped now. There's no asterisks in the square brackets. And if I were to undo and just do x plus equals 10, and now we have the original output. But also bear in mind the indentation here, it has to be within the for loop, the while loop, excuse me. So if I were to move this here, we'd have an error where we have another infinite loop. Okay, as you can recall, I'm sure, we just simply hit the interrupt kernel. And this is, an in, this is a kernel, this uh, page here. All right, so just move that back in place. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an X, we could change this to anything else but we also have to change all the other X's, of course. So it could be something like cake, which wouldn't really be appropriate. Um, it has to be something really from a, a coding perspective to be appropriate. Otherwise it's just uh, looks odd. Okay, so we'll just keep it as X for now. And moving on from that, I'm just gonna scroll down now and I'm actually just going to hide this now to make some more space. Okay, so let's say we do num equals one while num is less than 20 colon print the multiplication is num. And then we'll do num equals two. So we're starting at one, if we did zero, this would actually print indefinitely so we'd have an infinite loop because if you do two times zero, it's always going to be zero. And therefore it's always going to be less than 20. 
so we don't want an infinite loop. So we have to start with something greater than zero when we're doing multiplication here. Okay, so we run this. And as you can see here, the multiplication is 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Okay, so moving on from that, let's say we do division now. So we do div equals 1000, while div is greater than, as opposed to less than, 10 colon print the division is colon div then we'll do div as you can imagine instead of it being an asterisk for multiplication it's going to be a division with the equal sign divided by three so thousands all the way to 12 points three four so these are all decimal numbers here rather the floats with these decimal numbers, which is quite long. So we could change that by doing a round, which is an inbuilt Python function. Let's say we do two. Okay, great. Not the best looking, but uh, we'll leave that for now. So moving on to our next while loop with arithmetic. So we'll do a floor division which is kind of similar to what we just did before with the division. So while floor is greater than greater than 10 colon print the, the floor is floor. And then we'll do floor slash slash equals two. As you can see, 200, 150, 25, and 12. Okay. And we just do one division, we'll get the floats instead of simply integers, as you can see here. And let's say we do subtraction. So we'll do sub equals 10, while sub is greater than 0, colon, print, count down to lift off in, then string plus sec seconds and of course we have to keep the most important line within the while loop so it's going to be minus equals one if sub is equal equal to zero colon print last off as you can see here, countdown to lift off in 10 seconds, all the way down to one second, and then blast off. Okay, so moving on from that, now we'll do p equal to p equal to zero, while p is less than eight colon print. So we're doing formatting here. Dot format p p p plus p. And of course, the most important line as well, as always, is usually going to be on the fourth line. So it's the p plus equals one. So zero plus zero. That doesn't really make much sense intuitively. So we'll do just one as the initial value for p. As you can see, that makes a lot more sense. So one plus one is two, all the way to seven plus seven is 14. Okay, and let's say we do a equals one, while a is less than eight, print d plus d equals, whoops, equals, D, and with the modulus sign here, A, A, A plus A. So as you can see, this is going to be the exact same output, but we just have to do A plus equals 1. And as you can see, it's the same output. Okay, well, we could also change this to a multiplication. 
So instead of it being plus, it's going to be multiplied. So 7 times 7 is 49. And we can change these as well to, let's say, let's keep that as i. So we have integer, but we can change it to an f for floats. As you can see, we have floats now. And we change it for all of them we wanted, but it would be somewhat excessive. There we go. So f, f, and f for the free floats in each line of the outputs. So moving on from that, what we can also do is say we have two initial value, values of p equals 1 and colon for o equals 1. So we're doing them on the same line for these two variables. While p is less than 15 and o is less than 15, colon, print percent sign i divided by percent sign f equal to percent sign f and then the modulus sign or percent sign o so p o then p divided by o and then we do p plus equals one colon or semicolon rather then o plus equals one okay and as you can see here we have the division it's a bit unsightly so we'll just change this to an integer okay and let's say we leave that for now and what we can do is use a nested while loop okay so let's say we need num equals five semicolon cake equals also five while num is less than 12 colon while cake is less than 12 colon print zero plus what one plus zero equals we could actually just leave that but okay let me do dot format num cake num then num plus cake and we'll do cake plus equals one colon num plus equals one okay great so as you can see here we have five plus five plus five which is a little bit hard to tell actually because we can't really distinguish them because they're both starting with the initial value of five so let's say for instance i change this to 10 and put this to oopsie 17 for cake so they both have the same degree of difference but they're starting with different values there we go so 10 plus or 5 plus 10 plus 5 so in this case the 5 is going to be for the num and 10 is going to be for the cake and then 5 is going to be for the num which you can see here so you've got num for 0 cake for 1 the num for 0 and then you've got the num plus cake for 2 okay so moving on from that what we're going to do now is create a string of or rather a list of strings that contain all of the different types of programming language that I can think of the top of my head. So Python, of course, Java, JavaScript, R, VBA, C Sharp, C++, Julia, and we'll do HTML, CSS, C, and I believe there's another one called Go. And then we do x equals 1, while x is less than len lang, colon, print lang, x, and we'll do semicolon, x plus equals 1. Okay, actually we'll do that as zero. So we get all of them output. 
So it's obviously in order. So Python all the way to go. But what we can do is let's say we start with two and run this. So it's incrementing from Python, JavaScript, VBA, C++, HTML, and C. So we're starting with zero. That's all it's going to be for Python then. So if we do, so we start at one actually, then it's going to be JavaScript, R, C Sharp, Julia, CSS, and Go. So Java, then R, then C Sharp, then Julia, and then CSS, and then lastly, Go. Okay, so moving on from that, what we're going to do now is try to convert a while loop, we'll try to convert a for loop from a while loop. So what we're going to do is say g equals zero, while g is less than five, colon, print g, g plus equals one. So it's pretty bog standard while loop here. And how would we go about converting this into a for loop? Well, all we do is for, let's say, d in range 5, colon, print d. And that should be fine. Great. So we have the exact same output. And notice, of course, that we only have two lines of code here. With a while loop, we've got a total of four. But we could, of course, reduce this if we did a semicolon the exact same output okay so moving on from that let's say we do a equals 1 semicolon b equals 1 while a is less than 5 colon while b so it's a nested nested while loop so same as the a we've while b is less than 5 print so again, we're using formatting. Dot format a a b plus a doesn't really matter actually. I can I could actually ignore and just have one. I could actually leave out the b and just have a and and get rid of the while loop, the nested while loop here because it's going to give the same output either way. Now I do a plus equals one b plus equals 1. As you can see, we have 2 all the way to 8. Okay, so how would we be able to do this with a for loop? I'm trying to get the same output here with two nested for loops. Well, let's just try first. For j in range 1 to 5, 1 to 5 colon. For k in range 1 to 5, then the nested for loop print plus oops, plus dot format j k and j let's see and j plus k and as you can see here we don't have the really the desired output that we're looking for here. We only want to have a total of four lines of code output, but instead we have far more than that. We have a total of four times what we were hoping for. So what we can do is instead we'll do four T in range one to five colon print plus let's see the format t t t plus t great so as you can see here we don't need to really use a nested for loop okay and then let's say we do and num equals one num one equals zero excuse me while num one is less than eleven colon print while num1 equal num1 for g in we'll just do the list itself directly so 50 80 110 colon res equals num1 plus g print res and then num1 
plus equals plus equals four. Okay, so what we have here is a for loop nested within a while loop. So we're starting with initial value of zero for the num. And then on the third line here, we have while num one, so it's a string. So it's going to be from zero all the way to 10. And what we're doing here is for g in 50, 80, and 110. So this is this list here that we directly made. And then we're simply adding from 0 to 10, g. So that's going to be done a total of three times. Then we print res. So we're totaling these two values from num1 and g. And then we're incrementing by 4. So as you can see here, 50, 80, 110, which is the initial values. Because obviously when you combine num1 being 0 to all of these elements, it's just going to be the elements themselves. So 50, 80, 110. And then again, when we start with 4, so we're incrementing from 0 then to 4 and then to 8. So next time it's going to be 54, 84, 114. And then after that, we add 8 on. So you have 58, 88, and 118. OK, so let's say we do just one more of, so we increment by 20, and we'll change this to 110. So we just scroll down here. So similarly, we're incrementing, instead of it being from 0 to 10, it's from 0 to 100 and 10, or 119 rather, and we're incrementing by 20 each time. So it's going to be 20 plus 50, 20 plus 80, 20 plus 110, and that's why we have 70, 100, and 130, and so on and forth, so on and so forth, till we get to the final one, where it's going to be 150, 180, and 210. Okay, so that concludes my lecture on while loops. Hope that's been insightful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. Thanks. Welcome to Control Flow in the Loops lecture. So we'll start off with a very basic for loop, and then we'll add some control flow inside of it. So for i in range 10, colon, and then we'll do if i modulus 2 equal equal to 0, colon, print, even number equals i, else, colon, print, odd number equals i. And as you can see here, we have all the even numbers, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, and the odd ones of 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So moving on from that, let's say we do for i in range 8 colon if i equal equal to 4 colon print morning let's see morning elif i equal equal to 7 colon else we should have a print there print night and then we'll do else colon print i. And as you can see, we have all the else numbers printed out. So 0 to 3 and 5 and 6 are printed out by the else statements. The lf prints out night when i is equal to 7. And the if statement prints out morning when i is equal to 4. And if we were to change this to, let's say, 10, we'll get 8 and 9 printed out as well here by the else statement. So 8 and 9. Okay, so moving on from that, let's say we were to do x equals 0 while x is less than 10, colon, and that should actually be on the same line here, colon, and then we do if x is equal equal to 6, colon, print hello there. 
And then we'll do LF x is greater than let's say 8 colon print good morning and then lastly we'll do else colon print cool and then of course the most important line of all is x plus equals 1 and as you can see here we have cool and let's say we keep it as that for now so we have hello there and good morning as the last output so when x is equal to 6 we have hello there and when x is equal when x is greater than 8 excuse me it's good morning and when it is else it'll just be cool okay so it's quite similar to the previous example let's say for instance we were to do the same with a for loop so instead we're going to be converting this while loop into a for loop using the same control flow so we want the exact same output here okay so let's say we do for s in range 10 colon if s is equal equal to 6 colon print hello there and then we'll do elif s greater than 8 colon print good morning and then lastly else print cool let's just do the caps to make it the same and as you can see we have the exact same output with the while loop as we do here with the full loop okay great so moving on from that let's say we create two lists of numbers here so we'll do num equals 10 5 20 3 100 4 and 7 and then we'll do another one called rad and that will have the same number of elements so 4 1 40 3 120 5 and 7 and then i'll just run that and if we do a while leap of x equals 0 as the initial value then while x is less than len num colon if num x is equal equal to rad x colon print equal and then we'll do lf num x is greater than rad x colon print let's do that lowercase here greater and then we'll lastly do else print less and of course most importantly we do x plus equals one i just scroll down to show the entire output here and as you can see we have greater greater less equal less less and equal so we have two equals three less and two greater so let's see if we can convert this into a for loop so what we can do just referring to this is we'll simply copy and paste this code here copy and in fact we'll actually just write the for loop first so for x in range len num colon and now we can paste inside of it and that should hopefully do it so if i just scroll down here we should hopefully get the same output of two graders three less and two equal two graders three less and two equal great so there you have it okay so that concludes my lecture on control flow within for loops and while loops if you have any questions feel free to ask in the q a thanks welcome to break pass and continue lecture so break pass and continue are used in loop control break stops a loop at a certain point pass prevents a code from being run at all and continue runs a loop at a certain point so let's say we start off with a very basic for loop of for num in range 40 colon and we'll do a nested if statement of if num is greater than say 10 
and num is less than or equal to 20 colon print num. I'm just going to scroll down and if we run this we have the expected output of 11 to 20. So let's say for instance we put in a nested if statement so if num is equal equal to 16 colon then we'll do pass and as you can see we have the exact same output and what the pass is doing is simply ignoring this line of code here when we run the cell this particular if statement does not have any effect whatsoever however if we were to change this to break what happens is that we're going to be left with 15 as the final output of our code as you can see here because this if statement is now taken into account when we run the code and if we were to do continue what's interesting is that it's going to output all the values from 10 till 20 but the 16 is not going to be output so if we were to run this as you can see there's no 16 and if we were to do and num is equal equal to let's say let's say 19 and we run this what's interesting is that we have the 16 and the 19 output but if I were to change this to an or operator now we don't have the 16 or the 19 output at all and if I were to change this to a break then we should be at 15 for the outputs and if I were to change this to and what's interesting is that this doesn't really break anymore so as you can see here we have all of the values output and if I were to do pass of course then we have the exact same output with all the values from our range of 10 till 20. Okay, so I'm just going to show one more example here. Just scroll down here a moment. Let's say we do for word in compu with a capital A computation colon and then we'll do if word equal equal to capital A colon print word but we'll do actually we'll move this aside here so it's outside of the if statement and we'll do pass for now and as you can see we have the output of the entire string all of the elements from it computation but I've got to change it to break then we're going to get compute compute because of course when word is equal to a then we have break so it's no longer going to output the rest of the elements which is going to be a t i o n and if i were to do continue then like before the previous example with the number 16 you don't have the output of the capital a and if i were to change this to or rather add and word equal equal to let's say p then we have P and A, but if we change this to OR, then we no longer have the A and the P. And as you can see, there's no A and P here. And if I change this to PASS, then we'll have the entire output of the computation because this IF statement no longer has any effect. Okay, so that concludes my lecture on break, pass, and continue. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. Thanks. Welcome to zip and enumerate lecture. So zip can combine elements from two or more lists into nested tuples and then enumerate can generate an integer number next to each output and the ultimately both of these can easily be replaced with an extra bit of code. So the usage of both zip and enumerate, particularly enumerate is somewhat questionable. Okay. So we'll start off with enumerate, which is the more simple of the two. So we do, let's say, for i in range, let's say 10, 40, and we'll increment by 5, colon, print i. As you can see, we have the output of 10 to 35 incrementing by 5 each time. So it's a pretty straightforward for loop. And then let's say we use the enumerate. Well, what we do is the enumerate is wrap around the range and then we do let's say counts could be anything it doesn't have to necessarily be counts 
and then you have 0 to 5. So the 0 to 5 is the enumerate output, and the 10 to 35, of course, is the range output. And we could also change this to, let's say, 200. So we have 200 to 205. And note that it's counting sequentially from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can change the initial number, but not the inner number. It's always going to be incrementing by one number at a time. Okay, so how can we create the equivalent without the enumerate? Because as I stated above, both the enumerate and the zip can actually easily be replaced with a little bit of extra code. Well, all we have to do, and this is probably actually less code, is say for i in range the same as before, so 10, 40, and then incrementing by 5, colon, print i, we've got the output as before, and then let's say we do uh, 190 plus i, and it's not quite the same as the enumerate, but it's a reason, reasonable approximation. Okay, so moving on from the enumerate, that's pretty much done there. We'll go on to the zip, which is the main focus of this lecture here. And that is, we do tuple 1, it's going to be a tuple. We do 33, 49, and 55. And then we'll do a list as well of my list equals, say, 10, 20, and 30. And then we'll do z as the variable for the zip. And we'll do zip top one and my list. And then if we do z as the output, as you can see here, what we have is zip, and then it's saying where in memory the zip is located. But that's not very useful to us. So let's say we put our list around it so we can actually see what's happening. And as you can see here, we have nested tuples. In this case, we have three nested tuples. And what's happened is that we've had the, say, for instance, the first index. So 33 and 10 from both top one and my list in this nested tuple. And then the second time with 49 and 20 for the second nested tuple. And then 55 and 30 for the final nested tuple. Okay, and if I have to do type Z, we'll just get of course the list and if I were to just change that we get zip okay so I'm just gonna put this back into a list so we can use that well actually it's not entirely necessary to have it as a list here when we're using a for loop or a while loop it's not entirely necessary much like in the same way if we were to do range say 0 5 we don't get any output, but we can still use this with a for loop or a while loop. When we just do list, we're just simply, oops, we're just simply able to examine the elements within the range list. Okay, so moving on from that, we're going to use that now, and let's say we do for t m in z colon print t plus m and we have 43 69 and 85 so we're adding all of the elements from both the tuple and the list together to generate these three numbers that we've calculated so how can we do the equivalent without the zip well it's quite straightforward what we have to do is for i in range three because we have three elements within both the tuple in the list, we can do print tuple1i plus my list i. And there you have it, the exact same output of 43, 69, 85. Okay, so moving on from that, let's say I just scroll down first and we can do two lists. We'll do groceries equals apples chips, bread, and ice cream, and then we'll do the prices respectively for each of these items. So we'll do just as integers, 2, 3, 1.2, and let's say 4.25 for ice cream, which I think is a reasonable price. So we do for food in range 4, because we have four elements in both of these lists, 
semicolon print the groceries food we'll do a comma equals prices food and there you have it so apples equals two chips equals three bread equals 1.2 and ice cream equals 4.25 so we could do the same with a zip, which is somewhat more laborious though, because we have to do another line of code here. So the usage of zip is somewhat questionable, but it does shine later on in a moment. So just do list zip groceries and then prices. And we'll do zip shop. As you can see here, we have the nested tuples for the strings and for the integers. And then we do for GP in zip shop colon print G equals P. And there you have it. You have the exact same output of apples equals two all the way to ice cream equals 4.25. Okay. As you can see here, we didn't have to use this zip necessarily. We could actually just remove that list. We still get the same output. All right, so moving on from that, and let's say we do num1, so it's two new lists in this case. So num1 equals 100 to 90 and 10, and then do semicolon to keep it on the same line, num2 equals 12, 7, 90, and 50. And then we'll do zip num equals zip num1, num2. And then we'll do for i, j in zip num colon if i greater than j, see, j colon print i elif i less than j colon print j else print i j if they're both equal to each other and there you have it so you have 100 70 90 90 and 50. now we have 90 90 printed out because for i and j both num1 and num2 have the number 90 shared between both of these lists hence we have 90 printed out twice here in this line of code Okay, so how would we create the equivalent without the zip num, without the uh, zip? Well, what we can do is pretty straightforward. So essentially what we can do is for i in range four, because of course we have four elements in both of these lists, num one and two, if num Oops, num1 i is greater than num2 i colon print num1 i elif num1 i is less than num2 i colon print num2 i else colon print num1 i num2 i we run that and as you can see we have the exact same output of 100 7 90 90 and 50. okay great so moving on from that let's say we do our last example of numbers equals list range 10 70 and 10 and then we do numbers, and as you can see, we have six elements incrementing by 10 each time, so 10 to 60. And then we have values. In this case, we only have two and five, so we only have two elements, whereas these have six. So in this case, compared to the previous examples, which had an even number, or rather an equal number of elements for both lists, in this case, we have an unequal number of elements between these two lists. So this is going to be somewhat problematic if, say, for instance, numbers, if, say, for instance, I wanted to multiply 
each of these elements in numbers by two, and also multiply each of these elements in numbers by five. So that would give a total of 12 elements because we have six here at the moment. That's somewhat tricky. And if we were to just do it the basic way that we did before with the previous logic that we've applied to this issue of, let's say we have cal C equals, and we do, let's say N in, let's see, range, range, let's do range len numbers colon, and then we'll do s equals in fact I'll just leave it as that n Okay, what can I do here is numbers n times values n. And then I'll do calc dot append s and then do calc. And as you can see here, we have an index error. And the reason for that, of course, is because where it says list index out of range, well, we have one of them numbers which has six elements and the values has two. So we have a bit of a problem here. Okay, so there's a way to remedy this potentially. And that is if we were to simply delete this code here, for starters, and we do the zip. So what we do is zip val equals list zip numbers values we run that and then if we take a look zip val well we have a problem here as well because we have only 10 and 20 so we only have two elements from the numbers list and the numbers was 10 to 60 not 10 to 20 so the problem with using zip is that it only creates these tuples these nested tuples the number of them based upon the lowest number of elements in the smallest list. And in this case, we only have two in our smaller list. So a way to remedy this problem is to import ida tools. And if we run that, and then we check ida tools dot tab. And as you can see here, we have all of these functions and methods that we can apply to our code. And the one that we're interested in is cycle. And what we can do instead of importing it that way is we could do from ida tools import cycle, or we could actually rename cycle as say psi. Okay. And now if we apply psi, and this should be fine, just we've got enough parentheses here. So free here and free here. Okay, that should be fine. And if I run this now, as you can see, we have a total of six tuples because that's the same number of tuples that we have, or rather elements we have within the numbers list. All right, so, we can give this a try now with a for loop. So if we were to try a for loop of for n v in zip val colon s equals n times v cal c dot append s and then we do cal c. So we're somewhat there. We've only got six elements still within our list, and we want a total of 12, whereby the two and the five are both calculating or both multiplying each of these elements. So two would be multiplying all of these elements here, and five would also be multiplying each of these elements here. So we want a total of 12 elements within this Kelsey list. So how would we go about that? We still haven't quite achieved our desired results. 
Well, what we can do is simply, let's say we ignore this val values, and then instead we'll create val1 equals 2. We'll create on the same line here. Let's just delete that. Val2 equals 5. And then change this to val1 and put another one here of psi val2 and then we'll do z and then we do t equals n times z so n is going to be for the numbers elements v is going to be for val2 which is number 2 and then Z is going to be for the elements 5. Okay, and then what we have to do is another append, kelsey.append t. Let me run this. As you can see now, we have a total of 12 elements. If I were to do len just to double check, we have 12. Okay, great. Just comment that out. So let's just double check here. We scroll down. So what's happening is that I want to just run that again. So we have zip val and we have a total of three elements within each of these tuples. So what's happening is that the numbers has got, of course, 10 to 60 and it's multiplied each time. So two times 10 is 20, five times 10 is 50. And she have these two values here. Then in the second tuple, we have 20 from the numbers. And then two times 20 is 40. 5 times 20 is 100, and you have these two numbers. And then with this one, we have 30 from the numbers, and you have 2 times 30 is 60, 5 times 30 is 150. And then from the next one, and then I'll just go on to the last one actually, and then you have 60 from the numbers, the last elements, that's going to be 2 times 60 is 120, and then 5 times 60 is 300. Okay, great. So that concludes my lecture on zip and enumerates. I hope that's been insightful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. Thanks. Welcome to Loops exercise. So in this exercise, we have a total of seven tasks to work with. And the first one is as follows. Convert a for loop into a while loop. And what I want you to do is simply copy and paste this code here into an empty cell. And you're dealing with this particular variable called numbers. And it's a list of numbers from 0 to 100 which you can create either way, but of course you can just copy and paste it into the empty cell. And if you run this for loop code, you'll get this output here of zero to 250. And what I want you to do is simply create the equivalence of the for loop into a while loop. So you should generate the same output with a while loop of zero to 250. Okay, so if we just take a look at the hints here. Number one, the while loop should have x less than len numbers. Number two, the most important line of code in a while loop to prevent an infinite loop is the x plus equals one. So make sure you put this line of code somewhere in your while loop. And number three, create an empty list called second, which is equivalent to what we have here for the for loop. And then lastly, number four, start with an initial value of zero. Okay, so moving on to task two, use len with control flow in a for loop. So you have a variable called rep, which is a list of names from Joe to Rachel. And then I want this desired output of Joe as a replicant all the way to Rachel as a replicant. And as you can see here, we also have not three times for three different names, Mike, Deckard, and Wallace. And so the hints as follows are as number one, in the for loop, use the lend function two times. Number two, use the print statement twice. And number three, the if statement requires two or operators. Okay, so moving on to the next task, for loop with nested while loop. So you're gonna have a while loop that's inside of a for loop. So you have the for loop here, and you've got to fill in these lines of code with these hashtags here. And if it says add code here, you put the line of code directly in the same line. If on the other hand, it says add code VV, you put the code underneath this line here. So it would be here, for instance, where K is. Okay, so you've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 lines of code to fill in. And the desired output is as follows. 
human all the way to time to finish. So clearly these are print statements outside of the loop. And it's question, cell within, and you have cell within a total of four times, and you have cell a total of two times, and also interlinked two times, along with these questions here. Okay, so the hints as follows for this output are, number one, use a full loop with range to repeat while loop, which we've already got actually, as you can see here. So it's repeating the while loop twice. Then of course you have to use the k plus equals one, which is the most important line of code to prevent the infinite loop. And also k less than eight in the while loop. The number three, use if two LF statements and an else statement in your while loop. So you've got control flow with inside the while loop. And then lastly, number four, total of six different print statements. Four are inside the while loop. So you've actually already got four of these print statements. You just need to add another two. So moving on to the next task, nested for loop in a while loop. Okay, so this is the opposite essentially. And it's quite similar in some ways. So you're working with this code here, which you simply copy and paste into an empty cell. You've got the initial values, excuse me, the uh, values that are gonna be for X and Y. So it's incrementing by two for Y and incrementing by one for X. And if we just take a look at the outputs, we have starts and ends, which are quite similar as you can tell. They've got the print statements outside of the loop, similar to the previous example. And the hints as follows are, number one, code a nested for loop inside a while loop with Y less than eight. The number two, initial values of Y and X are zero. The number three, two print statements outside the while loop, which should be obvious. And then lastly, number four, use a range of four to nine in the for loop. Okay, so moving on to task five, for loop to fix student names. So we have some names here in the students variable, Natalie, M, Faye, Callum and Tara, and we want to fix these problems here. So of course we've got one that just says M. We have a capital A here and we have a space here. And we want this to be converted into a tuple with all the caps for four names. And the hints as follows are create an empty list. Number two, use len and if statement. Number three, use also the upper replace and append methods for list. And then lastly, number four, convert output to a tuple, which should be quite obvious. Okay, so moving on to task six, for loop with added values from dictionary. So this is quite straightforward. What you're doing is simply adding the values from each of the elements of the keys K1 and K2 to generate this output here with the end loop. So the hints as follows are, use one for loop with range and two, add the values from both keys together. Okay, lastly, task seven, which is quite a hefty task, and that is while loop with free inputs. So what I want you to do is work with this code here, all of this code, and copy and paste it into an empty cell. And you're working with the dictionary called prices and an empty cell, or an, an empty list, excuse me, called total. And what you have to do is simply copy and paste this code two more times, because we're going to have two more inputs. We have a total of three inputs. And the first one here is num1. So you're going to have num2 and num3. And you're also going to have to put an else statement below here with the append function being used to grab each of the values here. So for this one, let's say for instance, you ask for, you say yes to popcorn. Then what this code should do, it's missing some code here with the else statements, is that if you say yes, it should append the number five to total. And conversely, if you were to do no, then it won't add any value at all, it would be empty. And let's say you have for num2, it asks, would you like soda? If you say yes, then it will append the value of soda, which is two, to total. And likewise with veggie burger, it will do the same, it will append number seven to total. And then we'll add up all the values together and you get the output of how much it will be. So we have string sum total, and then enjoy the film. And also you could have quits if you want to break out of the while loop. Okay, so the examples of the output, there's three in total here, just to 
make sure there's absolute clarity. So let's say ask when you run the code, would you like popcorn or film? No. Soda drink? No. Veggie burger? No. Then zero dollars. Enjoy the film. If on the other hand you say yes and yes and no, then that would be seven dollars. Enjoy the film. Would you like popcorn or the film? You say quits. Then enjoy the film. As the hints as follows are, number one, create two it more inputs and name them num2 and num3 as said before at the beginning. Then number two, for num2, print would you like a soda and for num3, print would you like a veggie burger. And then number three, use the append function three times by grabbing values from the prices dictionary. And number four, use the break statement a total of four times. So you'll notice that you got it actually a total of, if we look at the top here, I've only got it one here. So if you copy and paste two more of these, then you have three. So you need to add another one. So a total of four altogether. And then number five, make sure you have the plus equals one to prevent an infinite loop. That's very important. And lastly, number six, use free else statements. Okay, well, give that a go. Don't worry if you're not able to get the last task. It's quite long-winded and tough. Um, give them all a try, and I will be showing the solutions in the next lecture. Thanks. Welcome to Loop Solutions. So we have a total of seven tasks, and hopefully you've given a try for all of them. So what I'm going to do is start with the first one, which is convert for loop into a while loop. And all we have to do, of course, is just generate the same output of this for loop, but with a while loop instead. So what we have to do is just refer to the hints. And the hints are as follows. Number one, the while loop have x less than len numbers. So we'll do while x less than len numbers, colon, of course. The most important line of code in a while loop to prevent an infinite loop is plus equals one for the x. So we'll do plus equals one for the x, or x plus equals one. Then create an empty list called second. And we'll do second equals empty list like we have for the first. And then lastly, we'll do second, start with an initial value of zero. So what we do is x equals zero and just scroll down now so there's no more hints really there necessary we could just refer to the code here of the for loop okay so what we'll do is let's say t equals numbers and we'll index by x so we're grabbing each element from the numbers list and then multiplying by 2.5 and then we'll do if t modulus 2 equal equal to zero so it's an even number We'll do second dot append int t and then that should hopefully do it and we'll just generate the outputs second and there you have it zero to 250 the same as what we have for the for loop okay so moving on to the second task use len with control flow in a for loop so we've got this variable here called rep which is a collection of names in a list joe all the way to rachel with the desired output of Joe's replicant all the way down to Rachel's replicant. We've got these three knots here of, from Mike, Decade, and Wallace. So what we'll do is make sure I run this line of code. Okay, so we'll do a for loop. So for i in rep colon, and that's an if statement. So if we'll do len twice equal equal to three and the reason why I'm doing equal equal to three is because notice that Joe joy and love are all replicants so they the number of elements within each of their strings is three so we'll do then I equal equal to three or then I equal equal to six colon and the reason for this number is because Rachel the number of elements within her name is six Whereas Wallace is seven and so is Deckard and Mike is only four. Okay. And then we'll do print because we have two print statements here. So we'll do another one in a second. I is a replicant. And then we'll do else print I is not a replicant. And then we should hopefully get the same output here. 
So if I run the code, we get Joe as a replicant all the way down to Rachel as a replicant, Mike, Deckard, and Wallace are not. Great. Okay. So moving on to the next task. So task three, for loop with nested while loop. So we've got all this code here. It's a lot of lines of code that we're going to fill in here, nine in total. So just scroll down, we've got the desired output of human all the way to time to finish. So clearly human and time to finish are print statements outside of the loop that we're dealing with here. We've got a total of one, two, three, four cell within cells. And we have one, two interlinked and one, two cells. Okay, so we want the same output along with those questions printed out. And it says here, number one, use a for loop with range to repeat while loop. So we've got our for loop here, but we want a while loop. So let's say we do it here. While, let's say k is less than eight, colon, we'll do initial value of k equal to zero. And we'll do our print statements of print human, let's see, human. And of course the other one is time to finish. So print time to finish. And then we have k plus equals one. So that's the most important line of code. And I've pretty much emphasized it here. Plus equals one. And then we have the control flow of if two LF statements and one else. So we'll put an if here. And we'll put another if or an LF here rather. Then another LF here. And then lastly, an else here. We can just delete this line of code. And make sure it's in line that's why it's red at the moment it's not in line okay that's all synced up and we can just delete these now just to get rid of them make some space and make it a bit clearer okay that should do we'll just do this one as well okay so hopefully this should work and if we just check and see whether we have one two three four cell within cells one two cells there and one, two interlinked. And we have all the questions, we have human and time to finish. Great, so it's the same as the output that we were looking for. And then moving on to task four, we have nested for loop in a while loop. So working with this code here, with these two, two variables, y and x. And we have obviously very similar to the previous task. We've got two print statements outside of the loop, end and start. And if I just refer to the hints now. Okay, so code a nested for loop inside a while loop with y less than eight. So this is gonna be for the while loop. Okay, so what we can do is do the initial value, so y and x. So y equal to zero, colon, x equal to zero, and then we'll do while, so we have while, and then we have nested for loop. So while y less than eight, colon, and then use a for range of four to nine in the for loop. So for x in range four to nine, colon. And then we have two print statements. So it's gonna be the start and end. So we do print start in caps, and then print ends, and that should hopefully be all of it. So we'll give that a try. So let's just double check. But that looks pretty much the same. I'll just double check here. Y equals zero, X is equal to four y equals zero, x equals to four. Okay, great. So moving on to the next task, we have task five, for loop to fix student names. So we wanna get rid of the M, we want to get rid of this space here, and we want them to all be in caps. Okay, we want them also to be in a tuple instead of a list. So what we have to do is create an empty list, and we'll do names as our empty list. And we're going to have a for loop. So for i in students colon if len 
i is greater than one, so we can get rid of this m string colon, then let's do s equals i dot upper, we put it in parentheses to uppercase it, dot replace. So we're removing the space here from the fa altogether, so it's just going to be one proper name. And then lastly, names dot append the empty list s. And we'll do tuple to convert it into a tuple instead of it being a list. Names, and there you have it. Natalie, Faye, Callum, and Tara. Okay, so moving on to task six. For loop with added values from dictionary. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. What we're doing is grabbing the key values from K1, say 20, and then adding them to the key values of K2, which is say 1,000, and we get 1,020, 2,030, 3,040. Okay, so use a for loop with range, and then add values from both key keys together. It's pretty straightforward. What we do is for i in range free because we have three elements in both of these lists print total d1 k1 i plus d1 k2 i and of course the print let's do end loop and there you have it okay so moving on to our final task that is task seven which is while loops with free inputs so we're working with this code here so we've got this dictionary and we have this empty list of total and we have to have a total of three inputs we've only got one here so we need to add another two more so num2 and num3 okay so Got these three different types of outputs here that we're looking for. And I'm just going to refer to the hints now and the code that I've pasted below. Okay, so create two more inputs and name them num2 and num3. So what we can do here is copy and paste this, and then we'll change the code where need be. So if I do, whoops. Okay, just need to copy that again. Paste, and then we'll do another one for num2, num3, excuse me. So this is going to be num2. Okay. And let's just change these to num2, 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 and we'll change this to num3 num3 and num3 and then what we have to do is add an else statement so use free else statements and we have to do a plus equals one to prevent an infinite loop so that should be quite obvious and what's the variable here that we have val okay so we do val plus equals one and we need to put some else statements here. And that's going to be let's do this here as well. So we'll do else colon we'll do oops, total dot append. And that's what it's going to vary, so just move that aside. And the first one is going to be for popcorn. So popcorn, so if I do prices, then popcorn. Okay, so we're grabbing the price of five. And then the next one is going to be here. That's going to be prices, soda, oopsie, soda. And then lastly, the next one is going to be veggie burger. So we'll do prices veggie burger. 
and let's just move the print statements inside of the while loop and we'll do break so we have a total of let's just check how many we have it says it user break statement a total of four times so we have one two three and four okay so hopefully that's all that I need to add here. Is there anything else? That looks good to go, apart from just the questions here. So I need to ask, would you like, let's just check the output actually. So one is a soda and the other one is a veggie burger. So would you like a soda? Would you like a veggie burger? Okay, so just change this to, would you like a soda? and would you like a veggie burger done okay great that should hopefully work so let's just check the outputs here so we do no 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 three times and then yes yes no and then we'll do quit as well okay so let's run the code and hopefully this should work fingers crossed we do no 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 great okay let's do the next one yes yes no she got hopefully seven seven dollars and if i do quit enjoy the film all right awesome okay so that concludes my solutions lecture i hope it's been insightful and if you have any questions feel free to ask in the q a thanks